What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Thomas Tech Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Thomas, bringing you another edition of the Thomas Tech Sports Podcast, but most importantly, the Thomas Tech Mailbag, the third edition of the Thomas Tech Mailbag today, and that was Stone Temple Pilots. I'm Ryan Thomas. Let's get right to it. First question comes from a uh, owner of a pitcher that is pitching for the New York Yankees, and he's not pitching well, and that pitcher is Masahiro Tanaka. Eric Farfalia writes, what do I do with Tanaka? He was just traded to me by you, from you, meaning me. What do I do with him? So here's the situation. Masahiro Tanaka is pitching terribly. This is the worst year of his career, bar none. He's been one of the worst starting pitchers since opening day till today. As of right now, he's pitching against the Boston Red Sox, and it is four to one. Tanaka is not pitching well. Excuse me. So today earlier, I was looking around my fantasy baseball league, and I, and I was trying to think of a way to improve my team. I've noticed in the saves category, I was not really doing that well. Even though I have Craig Kimbrell and Cody Allen, just in the past couple weeks, it hasn't really seemed to have been, you know, working out too well. So, um, looking to get a flashy name, looking to make an addition. And I rolled this Chapman is on the DL for Eric Farfalli's team, where he also has Madison Bumgarner, Cole Hamels, and, um, another player on his DL. So there's only three DL spots in my league. And Eric has also, um, Andrew Pollock, who is on the DL, but he didn't have a he didn't have a spot for Andrew Pollock to be on his DL. So he was using the three DL spots on Chapman, Bumgarner, and Hamels. Obviously, he's not going to cut Bumgarner. Obviously, he's not going to cut Cole Hamels. So I thought, why don't I send him Cody Allen for a role as Chapman? I'll get Tanaka back and call it a day. Well, it's safe to say that it's only been about an hour since I made that trade, and I'm already regretting it. I also sent Yadubal Herrera, um, you know, in the in the actual um, trade as well, who I just picked up, the Philadelphia Philly uh, outfielder. So, Eric, I would try to trade him. Um, I'm going to try to trade him possibly back to you. So keep those ears and eyes open for the results of that trade and, and much, much more. So for those of you that are Masahiro Tanaka owners, do whatever you can to send them packing. The original trade I made was Tanaka for Carlos Carrasco, and I'm looking to get that back uh, and undo the trade once again, once and for all, putting Tanaka on uh, back on Eric's team. As crazy as that sounds, I think we'll be able to make it happen. And uh, I do expect Tanaka to turn it around, but I'm, I'm just not I'm not up for losing my first place ranking because of a New York Yankee, especially when it is well known that I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. So obviously um, another situation that was brought up to me, uh, asked by one of my good buddies, Eric Ellis, who I traveled to uh, Philadelphia with uh, this past weekend, he wanted to get my take on the Ryan Brothers incident. Uh, what was my take? He said, Ryan, don't know if you saw, you probably did, but Rex and Rob Ryan were in a uh, bar altercation uh, the other day outside of a Nashville bar. Obviously, I had heard. Obviously, I had seen it. Uh, seen the little 10-second clip. Um, didn't really look like a fight. It looked like more of just a little scuffle. But Rob Ryan, the brother of Rex Ryan, um, looked to have put his hand on uh, the other gentleman's throat as the uh, bar fight was continuing. And it really, really, when I saw the video, my first thought was, wow, this is where we're at as far as, um, as far as, uh, Rex and Rob Ryan. Last year we were talking about 
Rex and Rob Ryan possibly trying to uh, redeem their family name, get back their family name, bring back what they what was once you know theirs as far as Buddy Ryan and that four six defense, really bring back respectability to the name. Right the ship with this Bills defense, Rex the head coach, Rob the assistant head coach. And obviously we know that that didn't happen. Both of the Ryan brothers were fired, and we now have a new regime at One Bills Drive altogether, new GM, new head coach. So just a real fall for for Rex and Rob Ryan. Rex now at ESPN. Uh, Rob Ryan, I, I don't think he has a coaching job in the NFL. I wouldn't imagine that he would. Um, so ESPN released a statement saying today that they would be investigating the incident uh, and the process with Rex. I mean, what are you doing? I, I don't know what the situation was. I don't know um, how bad it was. But in terms of just acting like a respectable adult, um, th- these things should not happen. Th- these two guys should not be putting themselves in these uh, positions, getting into bar fights, going to hockey games, and be- just being buffoons. Um, and I know that's part of the, the Ryan character M.O., but you would think that they would have kind of pulled back on that, being that they were both fired, um, you know, from from two major positions inside of one franchise, and it does not look to be the case. So um, the investigation is ongoing. They're saying that um, a drink might have been thrown in Rex's face, and that was why he reacted the way he did. Um, who knows? But there's been times where Rex has talked about being a fighter and, and things like that, you know, getting into fights with players uh, on opposing teams or players on his team. You had the Jay Samaro uh, situation and, and other situations while he was with the Jets and with the Bills. So it's not really much of a surprise that, that Rex and Rob are in this position. Um, but it's just kind of, it's sad. It's sad in, in its own uh, pathetic way, really, that, that Rex and Rob would put themselves in this situation. So something else that I want to thank you, you know, Eric and uh, Eric Farfalia, Eric Ellis. I got two questions from two Eric's. Um, Thank you guys for both submitting your questions. Also, I wanted to uh, answer a question from another listener of the Thomas take. Chris is his name. Chris asked me via email um, what my thoughts were on the possibility of Eric Decker or Jeremy Macklin. Eric Decker was released today by the New York Jets. Uh, Decker is kind of on the wrong side of his career, but I would assume that he still has a little bit left in the tank. But if it were up to me, my choice would be Jeremy Macklin. I think Jeremy Macklin would bode well for this style offense. He's a great deep ball receiver. Adding, adding Adding a player like a Jeremy Macklin would allow the Bills to use Sammy Watkins much similarly to the way he was used at Clemson with more bubble screens, more short intermediate routes, as opposed to Sammy Watkins being the deep threat wide receiver. You'd have Zay Jones as the slot receiver, possession receiver type guy, and you would quite possibly have the best wide receiver core that the Bills have had in quite some time. You cannot forget about the addition of Andre Holmes. I really like that move for the Buffalo Bills. That was a move that kind of flew under the radar, but he was a player that was basically the number two wide receiver on the Oakland Raiders until the Raiders uh, brought in Michael Crabtree. So for Andre Holmes, with the addition of Jeremy Macklin, to be the wide receiver four for the Buffalo Bills, I think that that's great. Um, I think that that's very good depth. Um, I don't know what the situation is on the Gary Barnage situation. Um, he visited with the Buffalo Bills, and then, then the, the trail kind of went cold. So that that makes this Jeremy Macklin move even more imperative for the Bills to bring him in, and I think they really do need that one that one extra wide receiver. Uh, you have Sammy, who has had real you know injury concerns. You have Zay Jones, who's a rookie. You have Andre Holmes, who I think is a good receiver. But if you were to add a guy like Jeremy Macklin, it would make that much more of a difference. It's got to be on the right the right agreement, though. I think a two year deal. Um, or three year deal for ten million would would be great, as I first uh, reported on Facebook to the uh, agreement of Chris Matthews on uh, Buffalo Stampede. So very excited to see what what comes of this. And and last night um, I referred to the ink being dry. The ink being dry meant that the Buffalo Bills 
know the terms that they want for Jeremy Macklin. And what I've heard is that it's a one-year deal. Uh, Jeremy Macklin does not want a one-year deal. He wants a multi-year deal. So only time will tell, but that was the third edition of the Thomas Take Mailbag. Thank you to both Eric's and Chris for submitting your Thomas Take Mailbag questions. I'm Ryan Thomas. That was the Thomas Take Mailbag. Thanks for tuning in, and take care, everybody.